48 kills, tag GG, it's uh, what the moose here, and today I want to talk about physiotherapy, or physical therapy as some of you may know it, and the role it has to play in League of Legends and esports as a whole. And it's something I've seen crop up in discussion quite a few times with various physiotherapists and sports therapists posting on forums and Reddit saying how they think the professions can be involved. So I want to give my opinion on it and also give my opinion on K-Tape, which is something you may have seen on a few LCS streams. A few of the players may have been wearing some coloured tape on their wrists. So I want to give my, my opinion on that and some of the evidence behind that. Um, as well as, yeah, quashing through a few myths about uh, physiotherapy and um, you may be surprised about kind of the scope of practice and what we can potentially offer. So, let's start off by talking about kinesio tape or K-tape. And like I said before, it's basically coloured tape that comes in a whole host of colours produced by a company and this company makes a whole host of claims about how amazing this tape is. They claim it relieves pain, increases muscle activation, increases circulation, prevents injury. I mean, the list goes on. You can check out the website, um, but the point to make here is there's actually very, very little evidence backing up any of the claims they make. And sometimes there's in fact no evidence whatsoever backing up these claims. And you have to, again, if there is evidence, kind of critique, is the evidence reliable? Was the study reliable? Are there any flaws in the study? And in most cases, it's fairly weak evidence. Um, so what's actually happened is this uh, website and the company producing K-Tape has had to take down a lot of the claims it was making before due to the fact, you know, all the evidence is very poor. Um, and if I give you a brief history about K-Tape, it kind of rose to popularity, I think, around the Beijing Olympics, where the medical team and the physio staff of Team USA were provided with some K-Tape and say, look, here's a load of K-Tape, you know, do with it as you please. So they started applying it to all their athletes on, you know, Team USA, and their athletes obviously did amazingly. Um, so broadcast around the world, millions and millions and millions of people and they're seeing all these athletes winning events wearing this coloured tape. But equally, all the other teams in the Olympics are seeing, hang on a minute, we're losing to Team USA, they've got this coloured tape on and we don't. Why don't we have that? Maybe if we had that, we'd be performing better. So soon, kind of all the other teams had access to K-Tape, being broadcast around the world and it's slowly like diverged down into smaller clubs and kind of your local clubs as well and it's very easily accessible now and it's fairly cheap to use. So my opinion about K-Tape after reading the research and using it on some of my patients is that the effects are largely psychological um, and there's minimal if any physiological differences that I can prove or the research can prove but that's just my opinion. You're welcome to read it yourself, read the research yourself and it doesn't mean we shouldn't be using it. You know, if there's psychological benefits to be had, that's, you know, that's there to be done. And it's not to say there won't be research coming out in the future that does prove, you know, there are physiological benefits to using K-Tape. But it, at the minute, it goes against a lot of my principles clinical reasoning wise. If I like to apply, for example, strapping tape, I'm applying that in the knowledge that I want to provide support around the joint or I want to limit a movement into certain ligament laxity. And there's a lot of research to prove that strapping taping is incredibly beneficial to do what you're looking to do. Like I said, if you're looking for support, it's beneficial for joint support. It increases joint support. Whereas with the K-tape, like I said, there's not that research there. Um, and yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd get that off my chest briefly. I don't want to go on too much about K-Tape, but I, I kind of already have. So moving on, I want to discuss how I think physiotherapy can be involved in esports. And to start with, I want to say that the scope of practice is a lot wider than what most people think with, oh, I've got back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, I need to see my physio. There's a respiratory element, there's a neuro element, and now there's a kind of, uh, preventative slash ergonomic element and a big push towards that side of physiotherapy and again I want to quash a lot of misconceptions that physiotherapists are really good at isolating certain structures you know I went to a physiotherapist he did a special movement or a special test on me it was really painful he said oh yeah that's what's wrong this is what we need to do and it's going to sound bad and I'm not picking myself up here but all the research says the inter of reliability between palpating certain things is really poor. 
And what I mean by that is physiotherapists can't reliably feel where certain bony landmarks are. For example, if we ask one physiotherapist to palpate uh, a vertebrae in the neck, let's say C7, and mark where it is on a patient, and then get a completely different physiotherapist to come on the same patient and mark the same vertebrae in the neck, C7, you'll get two different readings. And that's completely ridiculous. If you think there's a pathology or something wrong with C7, you'd think a physiotherapist would be able to locate where C7 was. There's loads and loads of kind of uh, tricks and there's loads of ways of uh, locating where C7 was, you know, starting off at the top of scapula, working up. But none of these tips and tricks mean anything unless we can reliably palpate spinous processes or other structures. I mean, some structures are easy to palpate, such as one of the ligaments in the knee, but it means we need to look at assessment and treatment as a more global approach rather than looking at this very specific, trying to isolate a specific structure and rehab a one specific structure. Because very commonly, the one structure you're looking at is linked very closely to a lot of other structures. And that's what's being pushed through a lot more now. And even more so, it's less to the assessment side, the physical assessment side, and it's more to the what we call the subjective, which is the discussion side. What the person you're treating can tell you is often more valuable than what you can find out in your kind of physical examination. So I still haven't told you anything about what physiotherapists can offer to esports. So let's, let's quickly move on to that now. So in esports, there's a whole host of injuries you can get. Sitting on your computer all day with a poor posture, there's potential for neck pathologies, shoulder pathologies, lower back pathologies, You've got wrist problems such as carpal tunnel, uh, repetitive strain injuries, you've got potential for tendonitis, uh, you've got potential for fatigue and burnout, physiotherapists also play a part in fatigue management, uh, there's potential for trauma injuries and rage, like obviously hitting your keyboard or hitting something else in rage. You can even potentially pull a muscle playing a computer game. And physiotherapists also play a part in managing chronic pain. And what I mean by chronic pain is pain you've had for three months or more. You don't really know what caused it, don't really know what makes it better, what makes it worse. You kind of always notice it in the back of your head and that can have a massive effect on gameplay as well as the fact that the acute onsets, the sudden onset pains, like some of the pathologies we mentioned before, all of these aspects have a, a role, or a physiotherapist has a role to, in the management of all these aspects. But like I said before, a big push of it is the psychological side and the kind of discussion side and looking for other ways of managing these, uh, these injuries, other ways of looking to progress with treatment for these injuries. And as well, a big push is for the ergonomic and preventative side. So looking at players and thinking, right, I think this player is at risk of getting a neck injury. I think this player is at risk of getting a lower back pathology. I think this player is at risk of getting some kind of neural symptoms down his arm, some tingling sensation, pins and needles, numbness. And it's about identifying these players before they get the injury, before they get the, um, the onset of symptoms and preventing it before it happens. It's a lot easier to prevent a problem than it is to treat and manage a problem. And I understand that getting injuries and getting symptoms doesn't force you to stop competing in League of Legends. Clearly, there's not a big dropout rate for players. But that's not to say players aren't playing with neck pain, aren't playing with back pain, aren't playing with neuro symptoms. They're playing through it and it may be having an effect on their gameplay. So physiotherapy, I can go on for days and days and days speaking about the role we can play in a team. I'm not trying to, to big ourselves up. I'm just saying that physiotherapists are involved in like national health services, they're involved in sports, they're involved in the work environment and it's a big push in the work environment, like I said, for the preventative stuff, producing big reports about how to improve um, you know, delivery of service and how to reduce days off work. So I guess the take home message that I'm trying to get across is that with League of Legends growing and growing and esports teams, members of staff increasing by the day, I think the physiotherapist has a role to play in esports. Like I said, it can be preventative exercises or even rehab exercises, it can be postural advice, it can be ed education and adaptation for certain movements or certain ways of playing, 
it can be uh, advice and education on fatigue management it can be advice education treatment management for chronic pain or acute onsets of pain some physios have prescribing rights there's a whole host of ways that we can get involved and hopefully have a positive aspect um, to to teams and it's not just our you know pre-match massage or stuff like that that's like I said before, it's leaning away from that side and it's more to the more holistic uh, approach to care. So this is a real brief overview of how I think uh, we can be involved. Um, like I say, I've said a lot of negatives about what, uh, what people think about physiotherapists, but also hopefully I've opened your minds uh, up about what, what we can offer outside of just uh, what you would have thought. Um, if this is something you guys like, then I'll release some more videos and I could, I could broaden up a bit more and be more specific in terms of what adaptations or what exercises would be beneficial. Uh, but thank you guys for listening and I'll see you all next time. Peace.